Hi there. First of all, this dish has nothing at all to do with corned beef hash. As much as I enjoy corned beef hash, this is something completely different. I discovered South Carolina hash only last week on a road trip to, well, South Carolina. Of course, you have to try the local food when you travel somewhere new, and I learned this is one of those food treasures they don't tell us Yankees about. The best way to describe this would be an extreme pulled pork stewed in a mustard-based barbecue sauce for several hours until it becomes a thick paste. You serve it over rice and you have barbecue hash. The really serious hash is made by taking an entire pig and stewing it for a full 24 hours, but this recipe is a little easier to make. Here, we're using a bone-in pork shoulder and beef roast especially because this recipe uses a lot of vinegar and tomatoes, we're using an enameled cast iron pot. All we do is sprinkle vinegar over the meat and give it a simple rub of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Then we cover the pot and slow cook it until it falls apart and becomes pulled pork and beef. While the meat is cooking, we have plenty of time to prepare some genuine South Carolina mustard barbecue sauce. I couldn't believe how easy this sauce was to prepare and how much it blew me away. But then I've been a vinegar addict for my whole life. Maybe that's why I found this dish so appealing. It's a very simple sauce with basic seasoning. And while you could add some hot sauce to it, I enjoyed it with red pepper flakes and I didn't need anything hotter than that. However, I think adding butter to the sauce is done more out of tradition than anything else. When I took my first steps on learning how to cook, the lady who influenced me made a point of never cooking with ketchup. Because of this, I put together a very simple ketchup substitute that's less sweet and more savory than regular ketchup, but it can still be used in place of ketchup in any recipe or dish. Of course, this is doing it the hard way, and there's nothing wrong with just using ketchup. Adding potatoes to this dish is optional, but it's very popular and there are quite a few hash recipes that do use potatoes. We also chop up some onions and the hard part of this dish is done. At this point, we can turn off the oven and set the stovetop to low medium heat because we'll be finishing this off on the stovetop. After slow cooking overnight, the pork and beef are tender and falling apart. The bones pull right out with no difficulty at all. All we have to do now is mix in the onions and potatoes. Then we add the mustard sauce and the ketchup and even more vinegar and a lot of black pepper to give this dish some kick. Then we cover the hash with water. And now we bring the pot to a simmer and let it simmer for at least three hours or more. All we do is stir the pot every hour or so until the potatoes are soft and ready to be mashed. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. 
<laughs> and now we mash it all together until we have a big pot full of barbecue hash. And the final step is to add in plenty of butter because it's not real South Carolina hash without the butter. Let the pot simmer a little more as we prepare a big pot of rice. And when the rice is ready, our South Carolina barbecue hash is ready to be served. Maybe it's because I've had a vinegar addiction my whole life, but I love the strong vinegar taste of this hash. If this is your first time hearing about South Carolina barbecue hash, then you owe it to yourself to go out and try this right away, or more likely make this dish yourself and see what you think. And if you do make this dish, please post your comments below and let us know what you think. Personally, I think this is yet another great reason to go out of your way and try foods you've never tried before. Because if all you've ever had is pulled pork from a mall food court, well, you're missing a buried treasure and a southern tradition that deserves to be spread far and wide. And I'm more than happy to do that. Thank you for watching.